Hello all, welcome to this session of OpenMentor.net. Welcome to Java. This is the the keyword in the new generation of programming languages. This Java is inseparable. Anyone you ask, they talk about Java. So what is this Java all about? Before going to that, let me tell you the agenda. This is going to be a, a series of lectures. So in this, about, uh, let's say, 50 to 60 are going to come. So we will be uploading to our uh, website one after the other or maybe in, the, in chunks of five or six per week. Java is version in, in simple terms. You can say Java as a language and platform. So you can treat Java as a programming language pretty much like C or C++ or COBOL or you can treat Java as a platform. So language side also we are going to see. We are going to see the platform side both. So when you say platform, what does it mean? So when you say language, this is an object oriented language. So we are going to see a couple of object oriented principles in this session. So it has its own mechanism classes etc etc and it has the standard programming features like branching conditions, variables, loops etc. So we are going to see that as well. And when you say platform it has got something called JVM which is Java Virtual Machine and it has got APIs. These are all interfaces. That means it provides a, a way in which the Java programs can interact with each other so that you can have a complete end-to-end -end architecture for big time applications. So it provides an environment JVM to run applications. It also provides a means for applications to interact with each other. That's why we call Java as both language and platform. Before going to the object oriented concepts, I would like to give some uh, a precaution. I would say you will be hearing applet, servlet, then struts, swings, so JMX, there's a lot of things. As I said, Java is version, especially beans, enterprise Java beans. So there are too many jargons, there are too many concepts out in Java. So what we are going to see, we are going to take in a logical way of how a beginner can evolve through the Java platform to cross through almost all these concepts over a period of time. So let us not jump into each of these uh, topics then and there, but we will go through the natural evolution by learning uh, simple topics first, medium complex topics next, then the advanced topics. So that's what we are going to proceed in the whole of this series of Java lectures. Okay. Now, before proceeding to the actual Java language and the first program, I would say, let us have this object oriented concept. It will be easy for people who have got experience or say some knowledge in the basic languages called procedural languages. Procedural languages such as uh, C, COBOL, etc. So what do these uh, what do these do? They do the same thing as Java also does, but what is the difference between uh, C, COBOL, and Java? The C, COBOL, they don't have a concept called objects. Okay, that is why Java is called uh, Java or C++ or C sharp. They're all called object-oriented languages. In C or COBOL languages, everything is a procedure or a function and all you need to do is pass parameters keep passing parameters they will do the job and then coming out the result will come out that's the only thing anybody can call any procedure very simple anyone call can call any procedure there is no restrictions 
So it is very difficult to debug. It is it's a tough thing to maintain when you have large programs like say 500,000 lines of code. The reason why object-oriented concept came is easy maintenance. Now this also provides a better modularity. That means uh, the way the procedural languages look and the way the object-oriented languages look they are all different so you have a better modularity and hence it helps you in easy maintenance and it also has some key concepts we are going to see inheritance etc uh, better features and uh, all said and done this is easy to code also rather than lot of laborious code it is easy to code as well and better features than the procedural languages uh, we can debate on the speed etc but uh, these are all the key areas the easy maintenance better modularity better features and there's one thing called information hiding which is a critical feature for the object oriented languages whereas in procedural languages everything is wide open but they are all restricted only to uh, I would say restriction is based on scope of variables that's all so you need to manage the variables in a better way that is the only way that you can do restriction whereas in object oriented concepts you have got something inheritance information hiding so there is a lot of features available that is why the object oriented languages are now preferred somewhere in the 1990s this, this started early 90s these object oriented languages start gaining a lot of ground across the industry and Java is definitely widely used programming language okay let us let us start with the key concepts of object oriented languages the first thing is called object so what do we mean by object I'm an object a chair is an object you me he she are all objects at the same time cat dog cow all objects apart from that non-living things like chair pen table all objects so in simple terms an object is nothing but something that has a state a state you can also call it as a property okay or as an attribute for for example you want to identify a human being you talk about the height weight eye color hair color identification marks blood group passport number right all these things are properties or attributes and then I won't say that has a state that has either a state or multiple states so one object can have multiple states now object also has behavior or say I would say activity okay so a behavior meaning for example let us list out the properties of a human being height then uh, blood group eye color etc then behavior how do we define the man eating uh, sleeping then walking there's a lot of behavior for a human being same way the one of the critical features of the dog variety or the dog family is wagging wagging the tail whereas a cat will not do that a dog will do that same way every object has got properties and set of behaviors so put together anything that has states and behavior you can call them as objects so it can be a living thing it can be a non-living thing you take air conditioner refrigerator elevator a water bottle a mobile phone everything is an object so any real world object you see in front of your eyes they all have properties and uh, behavior 
Okay. Then there is something called class. What do we mean by class? For example, I see you. Okay, so you an object. I see James. James is a different person. James an object. So two different objects. But what I see you and James do have some common properties. Many common properties I would say. Uh, the I, I, I can define these 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 attributes are there only the values do change so you cha you see a red color chair you see an identical chair but with blue color so both the chairs do have very similar properties except the color so a class you can say it's like a skeleton or a model of an object Again, don't this model also. There's a keyword in Java terms, but I'm suing. Uh, I'm I'm talking about a physical model, physical slash logical model of an object. So when I say an object, in other way, object is an instance of a class. To be very clear, to be a specific instance of a class. That means humans that fall under one class. Within humans you see men as one class, women as other class. Right? So there are different classes. But within that class you see multiple objects having the same qualities, maybe with some differentiation. So a class is something like a superstructure. Okay? It's like a superstructure from which an object is a specific molded form. So the object has got all the things from the class except a few differentiation. So you can have many people may have the similar qualities. Okay. So each one is, a, is an object of a particular class. So you see for example uh, Dalmatian is a dog, Pomeranian is a dog, at the same time Alsatian is a dog. But all these things share a common set of properties. So the class is the dog. Within that, an Almatian, Dalmatian dog, an Alsatian dog, a Pomeranian dog, all fall under the same class. So objects are specific instances, classes are superstructures. Now, there is something called inheritance. If you have noticed what I talked just before, I talked about have most properties same with a few differentiation. Let us take this dog. Dog as class. Now within the dog uh, you have this the dog family has its own physical properties. Now within that Dalmatian Pomeranian. Okay. Now within this this has very specific properties, right? The size dots, whereas again no dots. Then the size also slightly bigger size, okay? Pomeranian is smaller size. So what has, there is a differentiation but both belong to the same thing. They share many properties including the way barking, barking is an activity, the behavior. They share wagging the tail, licking, the way they drink water, the way they eat, they eat food, right? They are all the same. Internal organs, they are all forming almost the same thing. But there are specific things that differentiate Dalmatian and Pomeranian. So you can say, Dalma I can have a super class called dog, I can derive that information from the dog and then to have something called a derived class as Dalmatian. So a class deriving properties 
from superclass. This is called inheritance. This happens even if you take human beings, the, the newly born baby inherits so many things from the father and mother, the blood groups, the DNAs, right? Even some of the qualities, uh, some of the diseases are, are also genetic. So the inheritance happens because of that. Uh, the, they are related. The relationship between the two classes make the inheritance happen. So we have seen something called classes, objects first, classes, inheritance. There is something called interface. This is also another important thing in object oriented programming because no object can work independently. Even if you take the single cell organisms, they also cannot work independently. They have to do something with the external environment. So, there is a constant give and take between one object and the other object. So, if I need to talk to you, then I need a medium called air. I need to, have, I need to produce sound waves. So, I am interacting with the external environment which is called the, uh, the atmosphere. The environment has got air, the medium then my frequency of talking should be matching to your hearing frequency. So anything that needs to work with other classes or objects, they need to share some information. Okay. So when they share the information, they do request something and get something as a response. So one object talking to the other object getting something back. So there is an interface that is, this is called typically the information passing back and forth. That is called interface. Interface is nothing but conducting information from one place to another place. It's pretty much like you have the electricity. If the electricity has to come to your computer at your desk from the lamp post, it cannot come out easily. You have to have a conducting wire coming to your switchboard in your house. It goes through the meter. It has to come through cables. It has to reach you. So there is an interface between you and the primary circuit. So the interfaces are the one that conducts data across objects. So the interfaces, there are again multiple definitions of interfaces, but to have a very simple in this session, very simple understanding without interface, the, in, the objects cannot talk to each other to get some good thing done end to end. So the fundamental principles of classes, objects, inheritance and an interface, I think you are now clear with that. With this, let us do one thing. Let us get the first Java program working for us. Before proceeding to Java, what you need to do is you need to download Java JDK, Java Development Kit from the Java site. So search in the internet, download it from Oracle Java JDK. You can have different versions, but download it and then install it. So I'm working on a Windows machine. So you will, once you install it, you will see under program files Java, it will have some JDK, some version. <coughs> Within that, there is a bin directory. If you go to the bin directory, you could see two files, Java C.exe, Java.exe. There are so many other files. So make sure that you install Java and the JDK here. So you need to know the, the path in which you have installed it. So now I have installed it under C colon program files Java JDK bin. I have got a simple program. This is a very simple program. This uh, it has something called a class, the keyword. We are going to see the syntax. Just for the first introduction, see this. This is the hello world class name I have given. Then there is a public static main. Okay. I'm simply saying system.out.println hello world. This is the very first program. 
we will see the syntax what does this mean what does this mean what does this mean in subsequent sessions for the first thing I just want to know show how the Java programs work so we have a program we simply created a class file this is called the method the methods are called behaviors okay so this is a method within that method I have got one statement now I go to C colon okay now I have go to C colon let us go to C colon before going to Java or compile any program type path from your prompt because your program may be in some place I have saved this hello.java in C colon it may be in different places first type here in the path variable you don't see anything as talking to the related to JDK it doesn't talk about the JDK if this is the case to compile a Java program you all you need to do is Java C then hello dot Java when I type this it says Java C is not a recognized uh, command so that's a problem to avoid this what you need to do is open control panel from control panel you need to go to the performance and maintenance in the performance and maintenance there is a system you go to system within system something is there's a tab called advanced under advanced there is an environment variables if you go to environment variables there is a path variable select that path variable okay if you go to the path variable edit it it is a long text don't affect anything go to the end of it go to the end of it all you need to do is copy this whole stuff copy this entire path where the JDK is installed and then you need to just take that one at the end don't delete all the other things if you delete the other things other programs may not work at the end copy that put a semicolon so basically you are telling the path variable is the one that tells the system that whenever you are giving some command it has to search in that particular uh, program path also now I give it again it says the problem so what you do is exit because this prompt was opened before the path variable was created go back and create one more environment one more prompt now dir hello dot star now it says hello dot java hello dot text is that, that that's a different file now now type java c hello dot java the moment you type it this time it's not giving the error it is giving the prompt back okay now type dir star dot class now if you see there's a hello world dot class there's a hello world dot class this hello world dot class is the one if you see here this is the same name that I have given hello world is the one that I have given so you have something over here hello world dot class to execute this in this program I'm saying when somebody executes it just print the string hello world so I want to execute this program to execute this program type Java space this name not hello -E in smaller case this hello world when you type this hello world see it is printing hello world that means this Java program is now executed so what we did is we create hello.java then we compile that once, once you compile whatever the class name you have given that name dot class file is created when you do this Java and then that class name that class gets executed so you have a dot java file you have a dot class file then the java executes that so it's the very first program so welcome to java world so in this session we have done we have gone through the procedural languages and the object oriented languages difference and then we got we have gone through some of the important features in object oriented and the concepts in the object oriented programming world then we just ran our first Java program 
and it's not just we just ran we just compiled and ran our first Java program so with this we end this session in the subsequent sessions we are going to see more about the Java language thank you